Hello and welcome to the <laughs> Slingshot channel. Today we're gonna look at self-defense with crossbows and bows in Germany. Does it make sense? Which weapon is best suited for that purpose? Okay, first some general statements regarding home defense in Germany and in general. I know that a lot of people, specifically in the US, prefer firearms and of course a firearm is a very powerful, really dangerous gun. But um, it's also really loud. <laughs> Ever shot indoors without uh, ear protection? Well, don't do this with a 12 gauge. I did it once and I couldn't hear a thing for like three days or so. <laughs> but in Germany you can pretty much forget this. It is possible to legally own firearms, actually all kinds, even AR-15s and so on, but you have to keep them under lock and key, unloaded, separated from the ammunition. So it's something that is not a realistic scenario. Um, it just takes you forever to open one of these certified safes and so on. So I think that for a lot of people doing that is not an option. They prefer over-the-counter weapons, um, specifically the new breed of tactical uh, crossbows and bows because they have a fire rate that is very comparable to a pump action gun, you know, so um, very suitable, I think. But we will put the various models to test today. In general, I think that if you hear a burglar in your house, then I do not recommend to actually confront the burglar because typically that is an accident. The burglar for sure didn't expect you to be home. He thought you would be out on vacation, I don't know, having dinner or whatever. Um, so if he notices that someone is in the, in the house, he will try to escape, uh, ideally without someone really seeing his face and so on. So it is really recommended that you just, you know, switch on the light, make some noise, and uh, actually make sure that the burglar notices that you are in. Only when the burglar does not run away, when he doesn't do it, when he's actually searching for you, then uh, home defense may be an issue. And even then, uh, you know, you'll be in trouble if you shoot someone. If you kill someone specifically, then you're really in trouble because you'll be seen as uh, actually the perpetrator and not the victim. So, uh, and also in every fight, there is danger that you may die or get hurt or a family members of yours. So, so if you can try to get out, uh, if you have a door to the outside, just go outside and call the police, whatever. You know, using weapons against a human being is something that you should only do in the gravest extreme. So I do not recommend uh, killing, injuring, fighting an intruder. I recommend doing what the police says, and this is run away and call the cops. <laughs> Having said that, let's look at realistic ways to defend your home with these weapons. So this video really talks about an extreme situation, about one of the few situations where you actually notice you are threatened by someone who does not just want to take your VCR. Are there still VCRs? I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> your flat screen TV. Uh, but he actually wants to harm you, kill you, or one of your family members, and you're absolutely certain about this. And there's no help available to you at that time, so you have to defend yourself. This is the extreme situation that we're looking at, and nothing else. We're looking at three different products, actually one product in two versions, so practically four weapons today. And we're starting with the brand new Steambow Stinger 2 in the compact version, which means that this one is really a pistol, and you shoot it by pulling back the lever here, and then you can shoot very quickly, but it is a fairly weak pistol crossbow. That's the disadvantage. The second model we're looking at is actually the Stinger 2, same crossbow, but with a few different um, parts. First of all, uh, we have a much stronger bow set, a bow limb set here on here, that requires actually more force to be cocked, and therefore this is done by this lever here which also doubles as a rear stock. Um, on this one I even have a scope, although for home defense a scope isn't really necessary. Uh, in any case, it also has a front lever that also helps you with the cocking motion. So same weapon, but completely different configuration. Then we have the famous RX Adder in this version with the seven shot fast loading magazine. A very powerful crossbow that has seven rounds in the magazine can be cocked very easily simply by push putting the lever into motion and then shoots very very hard <laughs> and, and of course it's a repeating weapon uh, for exactly that purpose it's a tactical crossbow 
The last product that we're looking at today is the Fenris uh, bow here in the set with the EK Archery Assassin. And also it's been dialed down in power. So this is no longer a hunting tool in this configuration. It is very fast shooting and it is done for like more short to medium distance uh, home defense. So it doesn't really have to bring down a water buffalo in this configuration. The easier it is to cock, uh, the faster you can shoot. So like this, someone approaches you, you turn around and then you shoot. And if you want to shoot again, <laughs> it's that quick. Okay, and for testing, we will of course use certified ballistic gelatin. Only wheel with a slap. <laughs> but of course, that isn't sufficient. First, we will take this uh, window leather and put it on it. And we will actually glue that one on with its own device. This means we're going to heat it up so that it sticks to it, simulating skin. And this pretty much has the... it is the skin, basically. Next, we will put then on this piece of... Uh, cloth, it's actually cotton, uh, simulating a t-shirt. And then we're using a piece of this really thick leather um, and that is uh, simulating our leather jackets. So three layers of protective stuff simulating a leather jacket clad burglar. For all the weapons that we are testing today, we have broadheads. So this is the hunting broadhead for the uh, Stinger product. And uh, we go uh, broadheads for the other weapons too, because those are the most effective uh, bolts that you have in such a situation. Why would you load in anything else but those? <laughs> the distance is seven meters, which I think is a typical home defense distance. Um, and uh, it's also a small target. So. <laughs> Quite hard to believe how far they penetrated. See, they went in, went in all the way to the veins, pretty much to the hilt. Uh, and of course, all of the three layers have been completely perforated. And it still went in, I'd say, a good six inches. So even though this is a really weak crossbow uh, with both heads, it is really seriously dangerous. Okay, so next is the uh, much stronger Stinger 2 in the version with the 90 pound bow. And um, we're gonna shoot at the same block because I only have three blocks. In any way, this is more accurate because I can aim through the scope and therefore I hope that I'm gonna hit it in fresh spots, ideally right in the middle. <laughs> I can't see the arrows. Let's have a look. Did I miss? No, I did hit them just fine. Here you can see it's cut through the leather, it cuts through the t-shirt, it cut through the skin and actually almost poked out at the rear end. That is a serious, serious damage. Wow. Okay, now we are using the broadheads for the adder. Those are made by Steambow and they're really sharp. <laughs> and um, fresh ballistic gelatin piece, of course, fresh leather, fresh t-shirt, fresh uh, skin, everything. <laughs> okay, let's look what happened. Definitely penetrated. Yeah, <laughs> that's the result. See, they're all poking out. So penetration is even better than the penetration from the Stinger with the heavy 
throwing arm, which was kind of to be expected, right? Now it's Fenris time and we actually have the Wolfang broadheads here and we also have one piece of an expanding broadhead that will actually expand when it hits the target, hopefully. <laughs> expanding broadhead first. Okay, they all hit, of course, <laughs> and, okay, interesting. So, they all poke out at the back, and it seems like, yes, the expanding broadhead did expand, as expected. The others are poking out too. Penetration isn't quite as deep as the penetration from the uh, short bolts from the adder, but it's very comparable. Also, the broadheads are wider, and I think the amount of damage that they cost is greater. Of course, you can at all, you know, any time increase the tension of the bow, uh, and then of course it will also have better penetration. But for home defense, I think there's no need to go above this. <laughs> Yeah, we can clearly see that the broadheads did expand. So you can, of course, reset them so you can actually use this broadhead again if you find it. <laughs> Okay, now we're coming to the legal storage of these weapons. Well, the crossbows are considered a weapon following the German weapons laws, and therefore they must be kept unloaded and under lock and key. So you would have to take it like this, where there's no more arrows in there. You have to then put it into anything that you can lock, uh, a case, a lockable bag, or of course a cupboard, a, you know, no matter what it is, as long as it has a lock and a key, and you can remove that key, that's fine. So, um, but of course, it must be unloaded, and therefore it does take time to actually get it ready. And since it must be unloaded, it is a good thing that there is this speed loader here that you can simply take, put in, and then strip it off and have five shots ready. So this is very quick. But of course, it takes time, so you, if you simulate it, you hear the burglar, all right, you know, you grab the key to whatever you used for this, then you walk over, take it out, take the gun out, take the loaded clip out, put it in, so it easily takes you, I would say, a minute to get this ready, maybe more if you're nervous. So this is, has to be considered. And the same is true, of course, for the Stinger, same speed loader, uh, same loss, so you have to keep this empty and under lock and key if you store it, if you're not using it. For the adder, we're looking at the exact same legal situation. It's a crossbow, it has to be kept under lock and key. Then you also have the speed loaders. This speed loader is a little bit more fancy, and it locks on here, so um, it's probably easier to handle. In any case, it will still cost you precious minutes to get this ready for combat. And the Fenris is, of course, the big difference, because the Fenris is a bow and it's not considered a weapon in Germany. This means that you can actually put it fully loaded next to your bed or hang it on the wall or whatever. No need to put it under lock and key. And this, of course, makes it ideal for such uh, surprise visits where you want to be armed. Another day, another test run. Today we're going to test how well you can maneuver around with the weapons in closed conditions. So I will go behind that arc with the weapons and then try to stealthily cock them and then surprise our little burglar archery mat. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> Let's see. Ah. 
this works really well with a little stinger pistol because you can really hold it close to your body you can cock it like so so and uh, it's actually not bulky at all so this is very suitable for close conditions so now with the uh, bigger stinger So this is not as compact as the small stinger. Uh, it's also a little loud when you cock it. You can't really do this very silently. Um, uh, but it's still a compact little crossbow. So uh, yes, it is suitable for the task. So now it's the uh, adder's turn. That's definitely a bigger crossbow. So very clearly this is uh, bigger. I mean it's not a huge crossbow, it's still fairly compact, but you could definitely see that you need more room to actually swing it out and cock it and it's also you can't really carry it very close against your body since it is a crossbow after all. So it forms a cross and crosses are not very compact. Now the Fenris. It's going to be interesting. It definitely is more like bulky, but it's actually only like flat, so you can actually hold it closer to your body than you can with the adder. So as you surely saw, it is really not impossible to do that with the Fenris because you can actually really carry it close to your body. And it's also super silent when you cock it carefully. So there's no arrow in there, but you see if you cock it carefully, you almost can't hear a thing. So and then this way you can approach the intruder and immediately fire. And you can of course also decock. So now let's talk about the uh, speed of the uh, repeating action. This of course has been getting a ton of praise because it's so quick and you can actually keep it aimed at the target. So um, this will probably do very good, but we'll test the other weapons too. What we will do is we will do five shots as fast as we can and then in editing we will see the difference. I'm of course not an artist, I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm sure there's people that can do it faster than I can, but let's see. Okay. That was pretty good because as you saw it was easy for me to stay on target while repeating and that definitely is an advantage. Next candidate, uh, the one with the break action. That was fairly good, not bad actually. <laughs> now the adder. <laughs> Shoot from the hip. <laughs> now the last one, the Fenris. Let's see how fast that one shoots.
So next is distance test. Now, of course, home defense and distance tests is kind of a eh, you know, I mean, it's hard to explain to the judge that this was actually self-defense if uh, the attacker was like 20 yards apart. <laughs> so, but anyway, there are situations like a serious zombie attack or something where you might need um, accuracy over a little longer distance. We're not going extreme. I have put a balloon up there and that's a 17 meters distance. 17 meters would be about 20 yards, I guess. And I'm gonna uh, test the weapons and see how many attempts I need to actually explode the balloon. I have to reload. Ah! <laughs> well, it's pretty clear that this, on this distance, this is actually limited. I mean, as you saw, I hit the target almost every time, but it is kind of hard to do a pinpoint uh, accurate shot. Uh, weapon is a little weak for this, and the aiming system is also not very accurate. So now we have the Stinger 2 with a scope, which should be a lot easier. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. First shot. <laughs> okay, next balloon, next weapon, the adder. Same distance, let's see. First shot. So, next weapon, next balloon, the Fenris, let's see. Of course, first shot. Let's now talk about the options. How can you upgrade this, uh, these weapons? Well, let's start with the Stinger. And um, of course, this is a very flexible platform. As you see, you got a Picatinny rail here and you got one here. Here you can even install the laser where legal. In Germany, it's not legal, but elsewhere you can get a laser and put it in here. Um, you actually can change this. I mean, you can remove this little uh, device with the uh, lever here and install the rear shaft instead if you want, if you prefer this. So it's very easy to do that. Uh, there are so many options for this weapon. Definitely a very upgradable platform. You can exchange the bows. Um, of course, you can make them stronger. Uh, the arrows, there is a million different manufacturers that manufacture fitting arrows for this. It's a very flexible platform. Same here, if you want, you can actually install the linear cocking system uh, and then install a weaker bow. Uh, color kits are available, so you can have this in all kinds of colors. Here you even get the lid with the, uh, the Picatinny rail, so you can install a scope or a red dot, whatever you want. So it's a super flexible platform. Same goes for the adder, of course. As you see, there's two Picatinny rails here, so you can install, I don't know, a bayonet, <laughs> or you can install a laser where legal and a light. Um, you have a Picatinny rail here, so you can even install small scopes that would fit. Yeah, and you can even have like a folding stock, everything. There's just plenty of stuff is available for this one. Even uh, bipods that you can install here, or you can exchange the handle against one that ejects. So you have all the options. For example, this is my personal adder at the moment. As you see, it looks very different. First of all, it has a huge scope that it can actually clap to the side. So I can attach the magazine here, load the weapon, 
and then swing the scope back in place. I have a foldable rear stock. We can lift this up and then fold this stock in, like so. And of course I can even shoot the weapon this way, because everything is still available. And of course, of course I also have like a bipod here. See, I can simply put this to the front and I mounted them instead of the Picatinny rails because it's more solid. And I can even eject the feet here, like so. And of course, get them back and reset the entire weapon, like so. Very nice. The Fenris and upgrade options. Actually, there are plenty of upgrade options. You see, I have installed a red dot. This is the front holder, that is also an option. Um, you can also install a rear Picatinny rail and then in theory you can even put a scope on it. So that's another possibility. Um, but there is also space for the laser. The laser would install here. You can also get different uh, arrow tips of course. But the options are not as plentiful as the options for the adder. Uh, and also not as plentiful as the options for the Stinger. So it comes in last in terms of upgradability. So this brings us to the total result. So uh, on uh, the third place, the bronze medal, we have an even 14 points for both the Adder and the 90 pound Stinger. Then only one point more, so coming in and the silver medal is the uh, compact stinger with the 35 pound uh, throwing arm. That uh, definitely is a very, very useful weapon for home defense. And then the first place gold medal goes to the Fenris. Why to the Fenris? Well, several reasons. First of all, uh, it, uh, legality is Trump. You can put this next to your bed fully loaded. So therefore, in case you hear a burglar, it is right there. Um, and um, also because it is really accurate, you can go long distance if you want. You have super penetration power uh, and the speed of the shot is uh, so amazing. I mean, the shot frequency is just out of this world. It's really like an instant Legolas thing. <laughs> so it wins with 18 points. This actually came in last, but it still is one of my favorites because it's so universal. I mean, this definitely is a weapon that you can use for longer range. It has a lot of power. It's the strongest in the test field. So the last test for today will be the tuned adder at the 42 meter distance. And that's almost 50 yards and see if we can hit it. That is definitely at the limit for this weapon. Dritter Schuss, the third shot. <laughs> so it's still my secret winner, even though, uh, you know, it only got the bronze medal. Sure, it has to be said, but I love it anyway. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> I hope you like this, because that's it for today. Thanks and... Bye-bye. <laughs>